Today I'm going to show you how to collect seeds from things. You can grow a lot of things from seeds you probably don't even know you have kicking around and you can start a great garden just from seeds you have already. For example, poppy seeds. If you buy organic poppy seeds, I put everything in these honey jars, um, they will grow beautiful poppy flowers outside that you can collect seeds from again. Your coriander seeds that you buy as a spice, that will grow cilantro for you. Chia seeds, you can plant those and they make a beautiful plant. And I'm going to show you how you can collect seeds from different fruits, vegetables and herbs that you have around your kitchen and maybe even in your garden. Okay, so the only tools you'll really need for collecting most seeds is a paper towel, a knife, and a brown paper bag. First of all, in case you don't already know, probably one of the easiest seeds to collect is from a pepper. So you can see the seeds on the inside of the pepper. Don't throw them out. They're actually edible if you want to eat them. But if you want to grow them in your garden, just simply pick the pepper seeds off and store them on a paper towel till you're sure there's no moisture in them and then you can package them up. Next is a tomato. So the seeds in a tomato, again, are edible, so you can eat them if you like, but it's pretty simple to collect them. You want to remove the gel, because you don't want wet seeds. So you just pick your seeds out of your tomato. I just take a few out, like, all at once in the gel. And then just spread them across the paper towel with the knife until you remove all that gelatinous stuff and just pick them out. There we go. Just like that. Doesn't take very long at all. There you go. And just leave them on the paper towel to dry. And again, once they're dried up, you can take them and put them in some sort of package with a label on it. Next is garlic. If you have a garlic bulb that looks like this in your kitchen, that is fantastic. Don't think that it's gone bad. It's already starting to sprout. So all you have to do is just pull the sprouted clove right off and plant it this side down in the garden in the fall. And it will grow you, this little clove will grow you a whole new bulb of garlic by the next fall. So you want to plant your garlic in the fall and harvest it in the following fall. Just like garlic, you can even plant shallot bulbs. Just if you have some nice organic shallots, plant it root side down into the garden in the early spring. And they will grow beautiful big greens and a few more shallots around the edges. And you can eat the tops as well as the additional baby shallots that grow off the mother plant. Pretty much all fruits that you buy at the grocery store that are organic have viable seeds. So all you have to do, again, is just cut the fruit in half, pull out the seed, put it on a paper towel to dry, and store it away with a label on it with the date. You can do this with plums, pears, peaches, apples, nectarines. They all have seeds inside. And you can store them away and plant them in a little pot so you know where they are. And then when they sprout, you can plant them out in your garden. So let's head out in the garden and see what else we can collect seeds from. Berries. If you're out in the wild picking wild berries, you can collect seeds from these berries. Inside each one of these little pieces of fleshy fruit, there's a seed. Let's just pop this one off. So all you have to do is remove the fruit by squeezing it and here you go inside you will see a nice little seed. So you can do that one berry like this. Look how many seeds. Each one of those little bulbs has a seed inside and it's easy. Just squeeze it and the seed will come out. As for flowering plants like this oregano, you want to wait till the flower, just be aware where the flower is located, and wait till the flower completely flowers, and then you will notice wherever the flowers are, there will be little seed pods. Right now, this one is not turned to seed yet. And here we have sage, and the sage flowered, and now we have the seed pods of the sage. 
Now they have already opened up and released their seeds. So you want to get them a little earlier. Oh, here we go. We have a sage seed in one of these. So if you look inside the papery seed pods of most plants, you will find a seed. Here we go. That's a whole new sage plant inside there. So there's the sage seed. So you can again lay it out on a napkin, make sure they're dry. I like to use a brown paper bag for collecting these. You can take them in and shake them in a brown paper bag. But pick your seed pods on a dry day. Today is too damp here for picking seed pods, so uh, you're risking getting mold and you don't want to do that. So I have a black currant here and again it has seeds inside so I'm just going to bite it open. And look at all the seeds inside this currant. So all you have to do, just like we did with the tomato seeds, just scrape those seeds along a napkin to get the gel off of them. And then you have black currant seeds that you can plant. Same goes for this gooseberry. They are packed with seeds inside. So let's just pop one open and see. There we go. So just scrape those along a paper towel and one gooseberry can give you a whole load of seeds. As for root vegetables and many vegetables in the garden, you may want to leave one plant in longer than the rest because what will happen is it will bolt. And when a plant bolts, don't tear it out, it's going to provide you with seeds. So when it bolts up like this, the root may not be edible any longer because it becomes fibrous and woody. However, a flower will appear eventually on the top and you may even want to leave it in throughout the winter and the next season, depending on the variety, like with carrots and parsnip, you will have to leave it into overwinter and the next year you'll get your seeds. So here are some carrots that I left in from last year and now it has a big umbel of flowers on it like this. So for every little tiny white flower, this little tiny spot right here will be a seed. So we just want to leave these alone and um, in another month's time or so we'll be able to collect the carrot seeds. Peas are a really easy one to collect seeds from. You want a well swollen overripe pea pod and the peas that you will collect inside will be viable for growing peas the next year. You just want to pop the peas out of the pod. There we go. Open, I dropped it. And just let them dry out in a paper towel and um, then you can pop them in a container and uh, label them and grow peas from your own peas next year. Some plants like arugula have to get quite tall and lanky and somewhat ugly before they produce seed but don't let that make you tear it out of the garden because every single flower that we have on this arugula plant is going to produce a pod like this one. Now this pod is nice and swollen so it's probably almost ready but you want to wait till the pod turns brown and then you can pick these off, pop them in a brown paper bag, shake it around and you will have hundreds of arugula seeds to plant out the next year. Lettuce bolts much the same as arugula and will provide seeds in the same year if you leave them alone. So this bolted lettuce, I still like to eat the lettuce leaves and it's perfectly fine to pull the leaves off. After the lettuce has bolted it does get a little bit more bitter, but each one of these little flower heads on top is going to produce a pod that will be full of seeds. Plants that produce a fruit, such as the zucchini, will have the seeds inside the fruit. So what you will need to do, let's look at this little zucchini in here. If you want to collect seeds from a zucchini plant, is leave one of your zucchinis on the vine until it's massive, until it's really, really large and woody. And then inside, the seeds will be viable. If you pick the zucchini small, you will see tiny seeds inside, but if the seeds are not fat and swollen, 
and you can actually see the light through the seeds. If the seeds are transparent, they are not a viable seed. They're just a baby seed that hasn't quite formed. So you want to leave one zucchini, preferably your best one, even though you'd love to eat it, but leave one zucchini on the vine. You can still use it for soups after you've collected the seeds, but let it swell to its full capacity and collect it in the fall to collect the seeds from. Just be aware when you're looking at plants, this is a fern leaf bleeding heart. So in order to find the seeds, just look really close and you'll see seed pods starting to turn brown. Almost all plants will produce some sort of seed pod. These produce a lot of seeds. Inside this little pod, just roll it around in your hand and look at all those seeds. So for flowers, you can trade these with friends or just plant the seeds elsewhere in the garden. Here's a seed pod of a poppy plant. It is not ready to pick if you're gathering seeds. You want this to be dried up and when you shake it, you should hear seeds inside. So this is not ready yet and again, don't pick on a wet day. So you wanna to wait to see this pod turn brown, shake it and you'll hear the noise of the seed shaking around inside and then you can pick it and take out your poppy seeds. It may be hard to detect seeds on some flowers. These are chives that have dried up. And if you can look really closely, down inside the dried up seed pod of the chive are little tiny chive seeds. So if this was a dry day, I would pick these tops right off the chive plant and pop them in a brown paper bag, give it a shake, and all these little seeds right here, like that will pop out of the seed heads. So again, flower heads generally contain seeds. Another one that's hard to detect is this calendula. Calendula has an odd shaped seed and this is a non-ripe seed pod of the calendula flower. The petals have already fallen off and it's still green, so you don't want to pick these for seeds yet. But I'm just gonna pull one off to show you the shape of a calendula flower seed. So that's the shape of a calendula flower seed. And when it's dried up, this whole head is dried up and turned brown, you can just pop the head right off, collect your seeds, and you have free flowers next year. And they produce a lot of seed. Each head has enough to plant out a whole bed of flowers. I've even started rose plants from seed. The rose hip is the fruit of the rose tree. And inside this rose hip, once it turns vibrant red, it will be packed with seeds that are covered in like a furry substance. So you can just scrape the seeds out like you would with a tomato seed. Anything that's a fruit, just scrape them out and place them on a paper towel and dry them out and label them and you're ready to plant your roses. Seeds from this hollyhock will be really easy to find. This is a hibiscus style hollyhock and they are related to the mallow. They will have a seed pod that's huge like this one and inside this will be segmented seeds. So there will literally be hundreds of seeds all around like the segments of an orange inside this pod. So when this turns brown, you can pick this and this one, just this one pod here will grow probably close to a hundred new plants. Some flowers like this shoe fly plant and also the Chinese lanterns have an odd little seed pod. It's actually a little fruit. So what you have to do is look inside the pouch and inside the pouch you will find a little fruit. And when this fruit ripens, inside the fruit will be seeds very much like tomato seeds. Again, you can just scrape them out, dry them on a paper towel, and have more seeds to plant next year. So this is the cilantro that I planted from the coriander seeds that were my spices in the cupboard. And these are now bolted. And they are now producing new coriander seeds. So I can collect these seeds to eat as a new spice or I can collect them and plant some more of these next year. 
Once you have your seeds collected and they're dried out, you can make little packages or you can buy some little packages to put them in. Label them with the date that you collected them and where you got them or what variety you think they are. And it doesn't really matter if you don't know exactly what they are because a seed will never be 100% true to the mother plant. Uh, it's the offspring of cross-pollination. You'll probably get a version of that variety of seed and it's always exciting to see what you're going to get. Also be aware of the treatment of seeds. When you go to plant out your seeds, certain seeds require certain treatments. For example, some require cold stratification. Many berries and fruits will require some cold period, so either you plant them out very early in the spring so that they will get some frost or you can put them in some peat moss or in a little bit of soil in your refrigerator for the amount of time required for the cold stratification. Other seeds require hot temperatures so you must wait till after your last frost in order to plant them out. So generally the variety of seeds, whether it's tomatoes, peppers or poppy seeds all you have to do is look up the type of seed you have. For example, you can type in seed, poppy, and growing instructions. And it should give you the growing instructions, including any stratification necessary for the seed. So that's a great little winter thing you can do. Just collect your seeds now, store them away, and then look up the different varieties. And you can mark them on a little piece of paper to put in the package so that you'll remember what sort of treatments the seeds will need in the future. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed. This is a great time of the year to start looking around to see which plants have seeds, whether they're wild plants or garden plants or just the foods that you purchase can also provide you with lots of free seed, which can save you a lot of money if you want to start growing stuff. So I hope you enjoyed.